Next, we visited with Major Bobby Mays, who served in Afghanistan. I thought about the military because my brother was a military police officer and he just said, hey sis, you need to join the military. It was a mission that a lot of officers were enlisted had never heard of. I grew up in Frankfort, Kentucky. And, you know, pretty much I thought it was normal, you know. Um, I thought any seven-year-old girl, they kind of let loose on a 200-acre farm and let go fish and catch things they probably shouldn't be catching, such as snapping turtles. And I was a student council president. I thought I had college all figured out. You know, every kid's like, mom say, you know, mom and dad saved up for college. And so when it came to graduation, I went to my mom and dad and said, hey, I want to go to UK. I'm going to become a lawyer. And they're like, oh, good luck because uh, you're going to pay for it. So my brother thought, I want to go and get my sis and see if she wouldn't, you know, join the military. What he didn't tell me is there was a $2,000 bonus, and I've never seen a penny of that yet that he got. So that's how I joined the military and absolutely loved it. My brothers are 10 and 17 years older than me and everyone wonders, you know, how come you joined the military and, you know, isn't it hard? I'm thinking, try to grow up with two brothers 10 and 17 years older and you, you tell me which is harder. I guarantee you that having the two brothers are a lot harder than the military. When the mission, you know, ADT, I didn't even know what ADT, I thought it was an alarm system. I'm like, why are we doing that? The agribusiness development team. What that means is we're going to go over to Afghanistan and not teach farmers how to farm, but the mission was to help Afghans get a better product to farm with and then as an end result have a better understanding of, on how to use those better products and, and have the, you know, teach them, teach other Afghans how to do it. My main project over there was women's empowerment. And if you had asked me about women's empowerment, yes, I am a woman, but it's the most uncomfortable thing I think I could have ever volunteered in my life. You know, I'm a military police officer and I always have been. So I'm thinking they picked the wrong person to go over there to teach anything to women because I've, I've never been around them that much. I have two older brothers. Um, I've always been the only female on staff at work, which I'm full-time military. I've always been um, the only female growing up in a platoon full of men. So when they asked me this, I'm thinking, I want to be the biggest fish out of water, but I'm supposed to actually know what, what I'm supposed to do. But um, once I got there, um, it was very receptive. I have seven aunts, and so I felt like I was at home again. And that's exactly how, you know, the women received me. The main thing when you go to Afghanistan and to understand that is their culture. And you have to realize that we have a culture and they have a culture. So when I went over there, you have to really put your, your feelings aside and, and not judge. And when I went over there, I never really saw any of abuse by the men to their wives or their daughters, because mainly I dealt with women who didn't have husbands, they didn't have uh, nephews because they'd all been killed and they were trying to make a better life for themselves. But of the men that I did run into over there, they wanted nothing but good things to happen to their mothers, to their sisters, to any other women in their lives because they knew that it would help, you know, with the, them providing for the family. It wouldn't be all on the male shoulders. So it was very receptive. Well, it was a journey for me. I've been to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba before in, in 2002-2003. If you would have asked me what I thought then that we should do to Afghanistan, it wasn't very pleasant. You know, my mindset changed very quickly within a week from being over there because 95% of the Afghans want nothing but peace. They want their children to have medical uh, you know, supplies. They want their families to be safe. 
So, you know, really what I learned, 95% of the Afghans, you know, they want that. They're sick of the fighting. They taught me family values again. They taught me that if you don't have a family, you really don't have anything, and it's all about helping family. And what I was able to teach them is, um, you know, it's okay for uh, women to go and provide for their family and help out. And it kind of showed their male counterparts that, you know, maybe you can have a, a separate income coming in. And, and it's, it's good because instead of making $440 a year, which is the average income for an Afghan family, they could make eight or 900. And therefore, you know, they can send their children to school. They can buy better clothes. So it, it, was, it was a give and take. I, I learned a lot about, you know, myself and how I want to raise my family from being around their families over there.